I was on as a I was on as a co-producer, so but wait, over. Sorry. Let's start with um, I was on Tron because I won't cut oh, okay. the front part of it out. Sure, sure, sure. I'll say the project name. Before. No worries. I I was brought on Tron Legacy as co-producer, handling many things from camera to various production issues and all the visual effects as well as the post-production. So I played a, a significant role in helping pull together the overall all digital workflow of exactly how we would capture the clips, how they would get uh, transcoded to our various dailies formats, both for the Avid and for online and for other concerns. And then saw it all the way through the post process, including um, all of our plate pulls to visual effects, uh, obviously our editorial process as well, and then through to the final uh, DI color timing and uh, digital cinema package. So what uh, type of file formats are you using, the camera, uh, how did you get it into the Avid? And, uh... We shot on the Sony F35s and we recorded those into Codex, uh, basically uh, a HD project and we use the DNX 36 HD codec. Um, we considered the 115 and we wanted to use it for quality purposes, uh, but we were just a little bit intimidated in regards to the overall amount of storage we would need for a stereo project. So we went with 36 codec. Um, we brought in both a single eye as well as sort of the stereo fused uh, left right image uh, to allow us to view in stereo or single eye, and um, that's about it. <laughs> I imagine you'd worked on um, you know, regular films, 2D films mm -hmm. in the past. Is, right. Uh, was there anything that came up in the workflow, in the, in the stereo workflow, that maybe um, our editing community would be interested in knowing about? Um, I mean, really not in a significant way, which I guess is the good news. I read a clip from uh, Jim Cameron's uh, keynote, Vince Pace's keynote, and they talked about wanting to sort of dispel the myth of sort of having to reinvent the wheel for stereo, where it's really their idea, which I agree with because we took the same approach, is start with the concept of this being a 2D movie and then figure out what you need to do slightly differently to accommodate stereo. So there were certainly concerns in regards to, okay, how do we need to put this into the Avid? What type of image do we need? to play out of the Avid, to be able to view stereo, what monitors should we use. Of course, all those tools have evolved. We were, we were putting all this together in late 2008, early 2009. So things have only improved. I think the main thing to um, for people to concern themselves with is making a good movie, making creating a good story, and take it from a 2D approach, because that's what everybody's used to and knowing, and then just figure out what modifications need to be made to accommodate stereo. Storage was, a huge issue, I guess. Storage was yeah. Storage was an issue. Um, we ended up with a uh, a large amount of, of dailies, which we had backed up onto LTO four tapes and sort of two copies. One that we would call our Oneg, I guess, and then a second security copy. The storage on the storage in the Avid was significant, certainly in comparison to normal movie but certainly not significant in I mean there's plenty of storage out there for you to purchase you know so that's not hard to come by but it was it was more just making sure that we were covered budgetarily for the amount that we would ultimately need. Did you have any uh, feedback at all from the editors on the workflow or was it just pretty much business as usual for them? Uh, well I think Ultimately, it was business as usual for them, but we pulled, I pulled everybody together in early pre-production, so I had a lot of roundtables where I had the editors come to the camera house, for instance, something I don't think they had ever really done before, uh, all to talk about workflow, and visual effects was a part of that, our DI facility was a part of that, so they were engaged very early on, because I really needed to get their thoughts, their input, their ideas in regards to what they felt would work and, and not work. So. They were integral in sort of forming what everybody would feel comfortable with. And I think at the end of the day, everyone was really pleased with the workflow. It, it stood the test of, of the media, it stood the test of the project. And I think at the end, you know, 
as in any project, you reach the end and you think, okay, there's a few things we could do better, but it certainly wasn't, oh boy, we would have to, you know, totally rethink the way we approach this movie. So that was the good news um, that, you know, we felt that it was strong enough to stand up to the movie, but we also had some really good ideas for improving it for the next one.